It's been confirmed by numerous reports today that Chelsea Football Club will go back in January and try to sign Jules Kunde from Sevilla. This was a deal that was very close to happening. Chelsea have not given up on it. They want to make this young and exciting French defender part of the Thomas Tuchel revolution. Will it be done in January? The price needs to be lowered, though. Chelsea are sticking to their guns. They are not moving away from the original agreed price. A lot of pressure is going to be put on the player here to see what he does. Will he apply that pressure internally to get Zavia to crack? Also in other news today, we're talking about Jude Bellingham, confirmed by German journalist and, of course, ex-Liverpool player Patrick Berger, that Liverpool Football Club are well in the hunt to bring this sensational young English midfielder, currently at Borussia Dortmund, back to the English game. Big, big money is going to be needed. We're going to take your calls. We want your views. We want your opinions. But smash that like button right now, people. It's a done deal show. Let's do this. <laughs> Welcome back to the Terrace. Good morning to each and every single one of you. Lots to delve into, lots to talk about this morning. The transfer window really continues. And I, I don't think transfer news is ever going to go away. I think we're in this era now where we're being told about transfer dealings all year round. And I think it's important to discuss it because things often get lost in the narrative. Liverpool Football Club, as an example, have brief media. They have let media outlets know that Jude Bellingham is 110% on their radar. They are looking at him. They are serious. And they want to get this deal done. This is 100% legitimate. Man United, Liverpool and Chelsea are in regular contact over this potential deal. But it's a potential £100 million transfer. That's the level of money we're talking about here. That's the level of money we're talking about here. Potentially bordering on 100 million pounds, especially for the English clubs to buy Jude Bellingham back because the level of performances he's putting in already put him into the same class and category as the 60, 70 million pound players. Simply does. However, he's got two kind of strings to his bow from a sales point of view. Three, actually. Huge potential, massive, massive potential, huge potential. Limitless, some would say right now. He's really young, 18 years old. So you're talking about a player that will still be in the middle of his pomp. 29 years of age is generally the middle of your peak years between sort of 26 and 32. So you'll have a decade of Jude Bellingham and he's still going to have three, maybe four years on top of that at his absolute best. So you have age, longevity, coupled into that, sporting potential. And on top of that, he's homegrown talent. He's class as homegrown talent. So he ticks this big box that Premier League clubs care so much about and need to care about because of the rulings. So £100 million, if he's already performing like a £60, £70 million player, Dortmund are whacking, or they're going to try to whack 20 30 £40 million pound on top for all the other elements. That doesn't even take into consideration the marketability of this young man who is taking the world by storm right now. Liverpool Football Club, though, is very interesting. They have briefed the media. Dean Jones has spoken about this many, many times. You've got Patrick Berger now confirmed this last night. Liverpool Football Club have told their fans are going in for him. The reason I'm speaking about it on the terrace is because I kind of want to know how that makes Liverpool fans feel. And the reason I say that is because we've, we've heard this many, many times. Many times. We're going to have a big year next year. We're going to go big next time. And it's, I, I kind of get this feeling like, are they talking about 
are they com talking about this deal because they want to kind of paper over the cracks and soften things up from the summer, which a lot of Liverpool fans are still angry about. But the time next summer comes, it dies away. Two years ago, it was Kai Havas and Timo Werner. As an example, their names were mentioned all year. You know, Mbappe's name keeps getting mentioned. There always seems to be a star name very early on in the season. That's, that's the target. That's the player. That's the target. That's the player. And then nothing seems to happen after that. So I'm very, very intrigued to see. Uh, we have an interesting comment here from just some Arsenal agent in a Spurs shirt who says, Terry is becoming the fake newsman of football YouTube. Yeah, because I've made both these stories up today. <laughs> My guy, listen, I'm going to block you just because you don't need to be here if you don't like what we do. Uh, I made Patrick Burr tweet this news. I made Dean Jones write this article. Yeah, I made ESPM tell us that, that Chelsea are going back in for Jules Kunde in January if the money stays the same. That's me. I did that. I orchestra. I literally, I have the world's media on strings. When I tweet, when I text them, they make up fake rumors so that I can make YouTube videos up about them. Facts. You've got me. You've caught me red-handed. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now to those kind of comments is just block people because it it used to be funny. I, I could take a bit of banter, but it's dead banter now. Same joke. Same joke. It's got to go. you got to go now. You're out of here. You are out of here. You are out of here. Um, comment here says uh, uh, Terry in his feelings. It's not so much in my feelings. I can take banter, but think of something new. If it's the same old joke, I'm, it's not that I'm blocking you for hurting my feelings. I'm going to block you for not having a brain. I'm going to block you for not having... Like my daughter has more creativity with banter than this guy does. So anyone now who has bad banter gets blocked because I just can't deal with bad banter. <laughs> Terry is Fabrizio. I'm a shapeshifter. That's true. That is true. That is true. Um, look, the Chelsea news as well. We want to delve into Jules Kunde. I know how much Chelsea want him. We all know how much Chelsea want him. He's very consistent <clears throat> with what Matt Law and more so David Ornstein reported towards the end of the transfer window that Chelsea had this agreement in place, had a verbal agreement in place, around 40-ish million, depends on what publication. And that all fell through when Sevilla decided to get a little bit lemon, and Sevilla decided that they were going to increase the price. They were going to try to throw Chelsea under the bus at the 11th hour. Didn't quite work out for... Um, it didn't quite work out for, 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 for Sevilla as they thought it would. You've now got Jules, Jules Kunde very, very unhappy at Sevilla right now, but professional. He'll play hard. He'll play, you know, he'll, he'll do everything he can to um, elevate his team and play well, but he's very unhappy with the hierarchy at Sevilla. Chelsea still want him. They've informed the player of this. They will make an attempt in January to sign him again, but they have made it abundantly clear to Jules Kunde, just so there is no miscommunication from their standpoint that they will not, for any reason, for any reason, will they largely increase their, their, the price for him. They won't suddenly say, right, okay, there you go, there's 55, there's an extra 10 million quid. Chelsea simply will not do that. Chelsea cannot afford to do that because of the precedent that it will set. The precedent that that will set is actually quite a dangerous one, if I'm being honest. You know, it's quite a dangerous precedent to set um, in, in many, many ways. If you start bending over like that and allowing people to, you know, take the proverbial out of you, really. They, they just cannot allow for that uh, to happen in any way, in any shape or any form. Bad boy Terry getting drawn out. It's not about being... Listen, Roman, my brother, let me, let me just address this now, very calm and collected. It's not about being drawn out. Trust me, I live a very good life. I'm a very happy man. I just don't want to insult my audience's intelligence with dead banter. We all know these are real stories that are trending across socials right now. I talk about them and my little haters and the little haters come from other channels. The irony is I get on with the people from those channels, but I'm going to hate, I'm going to hate, I'm going to hate. And I've just decided all getting lock off. That's all it comes down to. 
Just let them sit in silence and cry to themselves. That's all it is, my bro. Uh, so that's it. Simple as that. Nice try, though, as well, yourself. I'll give you a pass on that one. I'll give you a pass on that one. Um, let's go to some calls now. I want to hear from some people. I want to know what they're thinking and feeling in relation to these deals. First up, Sharim is going to be on the line with us now. Hit that like and share button, people. Let's go. Morning, mate. Welcome back to the terrace. What, what do you want to say, bro? Yeah, bro. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine, mate. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Interesting. I, I want to ask you about this Liverpool deal. Can you really see Liverpool going in for a, a player that's quoted at maybe costing somewhere in the region? That's just in transfer fee, £100 million next summer. No, I, I don't see it. I, I'm hope I'm wrong, but literally for the last three years, they've been telling us we're going big and it's not happened. We had John W. Henry looking down the Sky Sports camera saying... Um, Jurgen Klopp's going to have money to spend to challenge for the league title. We went on to win the league next season, but there was no money. All he did was give us Adrian in, set Vandenberg and Harvey Elliott, which wasn't good enough to challenge for the league anyway. So I believe when I see it, but I'm not getting my hopes up, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, hear, I hear you on that. I, I, I couldn't agree more. I think the reason that I pulled on this story is I'm going to time capture it. I'm going to time capture it because of the, the types of journalists that have confirmed it in the sense of your your interest in them and i think was you know liverpool's interest what i find interesting with liverpool and this is not a dig at, at liverpool fans this is me trying to help you all with, with your club is that your club will talk about and allow information to be public i.e what patrick Berger put out last night uh finally verified as well i can't believe it's going to get verified where it says liverpool are chasing Jude bellingham reports in the uk are correct like Outside of transfer windows, Liverpool are now the best. They're absolutely the kings of transfer windows outside the transfer window, but it's, inside of it, they can't sign a play for the life of them. Well, but inside of it, it's quiet. Nothing's going on. We work in we work in the dark. Like, you know, we work in the shadow of dark. Yeah. You know, I kind of, of you know that they allow all these rumors and these stories to go out, and I feel like that's the manipulation of the fans. Does that make sense? No, I agree. And like literally, like since the end of this transfer window, I kind of I. I I was FSG out because of this European Super League, but now this just kind of confirms everything because you just kind of look back at everything and it's just like, like they've literally just pulled our pants down and we've been celebrating for years. And like we say like we win and lose as a team. I disagree. We win and lose because of Jurgen Klopp and the players and the way the director works and, you know, all this stuff. But the owners, it just feels like they'll do anything possible just to make sure that uh, we don't... we we Like... I don't know why they just it doesn't feel like they're serious I, I genuinely don't feel like they're serious to be competing at the top level and because of that I kind of got like this morbid curiosity just deep down on what us to finish five or six just to see how they come how they react then and then we'll see their true colors like if they're a top four club and that's what they're happy with they'll spend if we're still in the top four they'll just bullshit us every year like they've been doing for the last three seasons but exactly, and like you had Paul Joyce, Paul Joyce, you know, who's very respected in the Liverpool community. He has yeah. said Liverpool expected to pursue Jude Bellingham next summer, and are significantly interested in the player. Uh, and my view is like I, I don't, I don't disagree with the significantly interested part. It's whether they're willing to spend, whether they're willing to spend that money. And I'm just going to be very intrigued to see in three or four months' time, uh, sorry, like a month or so before the window, what the conversation comes up. Like I almost predict now, what we will start to hear is. Uh, still tough times in the world. Yeah, monies we can't compete with people. Re -te 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 -te. And I just, I just feel a little bit. I just feel a little bit sorry for Liverpool fans because I feel like you're you're being manipulated all year yeah. and then lied to every summer. I feel bad for the guy, the journalists, and you know all these different YouTube channels that get all this information passed on to them because they tell us what what we're looking at, who we're looking to sign, and how realistic it is. But when it comes down to it, they've got egg on their face. And I just feel so bad for them because local fans have got journalists and the media mainly for lying. It might not be necessarily lie. They might be looking at them. But I just feel like the club just do it just to get us off their backs. And then once it doesn't happen, we've got, we, we literally got someone to have a go at. And it's literally the journalists and all the YouTubers. Mate, I, I, and I, spoke to, I spoke to a journalist in the summer. <clears throat> yeah. And he said that he does not like to, he, Liverpool are the one club that he doesn't report on with any great detail. He just keeps his mouth, no matter what he's told. 
And sometimes he's told he's told stories that he said would go viral, would trend, yeah. would, would 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 increase his reach. He said, but he doesn't know whether, whether he gets it directly from the club. And he said he, yeah. don't, he doesn't believe it. He says sometimes he feels like they're saying it just to, to create some hype. But he yeah. says it, it might be in, in like the November. And he says he puts it out, it gets all this hype. But then if it doesn't happen, he says what he finds is 80% of the Liverpool fans that follow him will attack him for sharing the information and not think that he's been given it by the football club. They, they the Football fans have got this belief. And I used to think like this when I was younger. And as you grow yeah. older and you get more educated, you learn this. But it's like most journalists, when it comes to trend, I'm not talking about political journalists or like anything. <laughs> They're serious. all the I'm, same. What, 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 what I'm yeah. saying is I'm, I'm saying with transfer journalists, I don't think transfer journalists sit there like Paul Joyce. I don't think Paul Joyce sat there yesterday morning, Patrick Berger last night, and made this up. Yeah. Do you know where I'm coming from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I understand, yeah. There we go. I, Listen, I used to... Oh, sorry. Mate, no, mate, 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 no. Mate, no, it's just like, I I totally agree with you. Like, I think it's been a bit of an eye opener for the last two years listening to you because I just thought people just make this stuff as they go along or if, for example, a club is looking at a player... You know, they're like, oh, they're looking to sign them and it's bullshit. But, you know, listening to how it works now, okay, makes more sense. And it ju I just feel like the clubs are literally just, they're, they're mugging everyone off and they're just laughing all their way to the bank. And I, I just kind of, it kind of frustrates me as being a local fan this season. Like, it's, I've, I don't know what I'm going to do this season if we finish sixth. So it'll be fun. There we, there we go, mate. Srim, top man. Thanks for coming on and having your say. I'm going to do some of these comments here. Uh, Terry, what do you think Trent will join Real Madrid? I, I can't see Trent Alexander-Arnold leaving Liverpool, not at this moment in time at all. Uh, big up Terry and the people in the chat. Thank you, DJ, my guy. Football Fan Zone says, if Liverpool genuinely want to sign Bellingham, that would indicate a major sale or two. Uh, Salah to leave. Liverpool For Liverpool to get Jude Bellingham, they have to break their current transfer model. Their transfer model that they keep telling us, or admit that their transfer model is just, it, it, it doesn't really exist, and that they just say they only sell when they buy. So we always get told they only sell, buy big when they sell big. Therefore, you can't sign a £100 million player without selling someone. I, I just don't see it happening, unless they change that way. Who they, who do they, the two or three players, like I look at like Firmino and Mane, if they don't improve this season significantly, I think Liverpool are going to look back and, and, and really regret not cashing out on one or two of them when they're at their pomp. And sometimes that's what's important to do as a football club. Unless you've got mass, a mass income, it's to cash out at the right times. Let's do some more calls here. Thank you for your comments that are coming in as well, people. Super chat, any questions you've got in for me? Member chats as well will do. Bellingham to United next summer. That's why we didn't go all out for one this summer. That could be the case. Um, ESPN just confirming in another tweet that um, I've that now as well that uh, Chelsea will uh, be going back in for Jules Kunde in January. But of course, Sevilla have got to drop their demands. But yeah, Terry Flew has made that up. Abs is on the show now. Abs is a Chelsea fan. What are you saying, mate? You're on mute, brother. Oh, sorry. So what's going on, Terry? Good, bro. Yeah, I'm very good, my man. What are you here to say? So first off, I want to say one thing about Kunde, then I'll go on to Liverpool. So you see what it is with Kunde. Yeah? Obviously, I'm happy that we're going back in for him because we do need another centre-back. You know, Christensen and Rudiger, their contracts are running low. And I hope this is one of them things where it's literally he's coming in to replace him because as much depth as we have in our squad, Thiago Silva is getting on a bit. As I mentioned, the contracts are running down. And I do like Kunde. The only thing I worry about him is I am not sure how he would do in a back four as opposed to, and, and you know, naturally, because obviously we're going for the league this season, none of this top four business no more. We're, we're trying to win titles. And at some point, you're going to have to maybe change formation to change your tactics. That's the only thing I'd worry about. And you see what it is with Liverpool. Um, I think it was Cal from Coppish who said it perfectly. They were sold a dream, really, because they've got, because the name Liverpool is one of the two biggest names in English football. And the fan revenue they generate by them, without any of the sponsorship and stuff like that is probably second to none, apart from Manchester United. So it's whole thing about they can't go spend AEMs on Duke Bellingham is a lot of rubbish because the um, FSG don't actually have to put in their own money to go and get him because they generate enough money as a football club. And it's li re really just about their transfer policy being poor and all that. And for me, 
if Liverpool don't partner up, if they don't replace Mane, because I do think Mane's finished, I think Firmino's got a bit more time. I do think he gets a bit disrespected. I think he can be afforded a bit more time. If they don't replace Mane, if they don't start partnering up, then I don't think you'll be seeing Liverpool in a title race for the next five, six years, to be honest. Mate, they've got to improve their squad. Um, there's no doubt to, to maintain where they are uh, and, and to improve on it because City and City and Chelsea and Man United are just not standing still. And they've, they've got one advantage over Man United in most people's eyes. They have a world-class manager in comparison to Man United. However, Oli won't be here forever, in my opinion. You know, if Oli is sacked this year because he underachieves with this squad and a class manager comes in, that's like Man United's squad is ready to win titles. It's ready to win Champions Leagues. It now needs the manager to step up and make sure we we maintain consistency. That's one more piece of the jigsaw, essentially. You could argue with CDM. Chelsea have got it. City are in there for the next two years at least. So Liverpool definitely need to, to, to pattern up, as you say. Top man, Abs, thanks for coming on and having your say. Really appreciate it, bro. Lee here in the comments, one of our members, says, Terry, Chelsea have been looking at Bellingham before he, before he even went to Dortmund. He chose to go to Dortmund over us that time to better progress his career. I think, yeah, look, Chelsea have been looking, everyone's been looking at him. There's an article this morning out that I read on um, Court Offside, but it was, I think it was from a 90 Min report, I think. It was from somewhere, but it was basically talk, uh, talking to Tony Adams. Tony Adams, you know, said, you know, Arsenal had the chance to sign Jude Bellingham and they didn't. Man United tried to, but the deal didn't come off. He chose Dortmund. And I think a large part of him choosing Dortmund was the game time that he was going to get. I think it was a big mistake from Man United. I feel like we should have bought him and you look at him now and it was, you know, it, it's a mistake. I'm not going to try and dress it up in any which way. It was a mistake. But Chelsea are definitely interested in, in him as well. But what I've said to a few Chelsea fans in the last few days, and I stand by it oh, with full chest, full chest. They can't sign all these midfielders they're looking at. They just can't and won't. So... Who is it? Is it Bellingham you're getting? Is it Rice? Are you going to keep Niguez? Are you going to develop Billy Gilmore? And then who drops out of your midfield? If you if you if you bought two of them, who drops out? Kante, Jorginho? You play with a double pivot. So there is options for Liverpool and Man United to gain one of these stars that Chelsea are looking at. Yesterday it was Declan Rice. No, we're definitely getting him, Chelsea fans said to me. Today it's no, no, no. I think we'll get Bellingham as well. I don't see you dropping 200 million pounds on two central midfielders next summer. Personally, I don't. I don't, but we'll see what happens there. Next on the show, we've got man like Monster Ahmed to have you say. What are you saying, brother? Hi, Terry. How are you doing, Kay? Yeah, I'm very good. What do you want to say, my friend? Um, I think every Liverpool fan that knows that this Jude Bellingham news is BS. It's it's not going to happen. Um, we've been we've been mugged off, Terry, by FSG for a very long time now, and there's no way in hell we're spending 80 million. I mean, we were trying to get deals. That will cost like 30, 40 millions lower. So where on earth are we going to get 80 million from? Football fan zone actually said the right thing. If you are going to make that money and get that player, we are going to have to sell Salah or Mane or Firmino. Because um, I think there's a bit of slight, slight issue with Salah in terms of he wants a 500k a week uh, contract, which could possibly persuade Liverpool to sell him. But I don't see it happening, Terry. I mean, FSG... They, they 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 love this self-sustaining model. They will never invest in the squad. For them, football is secondary. For them, it's about how profit the c club can be. Um, this is the success in the last few years, and it's just keeping that success based on what they already have. They're not going to invest into the club, and it's just it's a bit um, frustrating, Terry. And I'm I'm just quite annoyed. Um, sorry, to my nephew's just come in. Yeah, that's two seconds. Sorry. Um, yeah, no. So it's just a bit frustrating, Terry. And I mean, I've said it from day one that FSG, if they're not going to invest, they need to get out of the club and just get some new owners in. Because you've got to look at our squad. A lot of the players are going to be 30 years old next year. This big summer we're going to have, a lot of players are going to be 30 plus. And that means it's going to be a, quite a huge major overhaul squad and FSG are not just not going to do that. So I don't think it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to make of it, Terry. It's just frustrating as Liverpool. Like I, I said, I, I think, I think, I think you know what to make it. Look, if Liverpool go and pull this deal off. You will not hear me say anything other than amazing business. What a brilliant deal! What a wonderful investment. My, what I found interesting about this this rumor going out is the vast majority of replies that I've read, the poll we've got running now on here. You know, 
whether it was Paul Joyce, Patrick Berger, whoever shared this news, I would say 80% of the responses from Liverpool fans have been, we'll believe it when we see it. And I think that there is a changing here. And it, it, maybe this is for FSG to respond to. People are no longer believing what they're being told. So it's, it's down to FSG to change your mind and buy do belling without you having this. And, and the point is, if you have to sell Mo Salah or you have to sell Mane and Firmino to fund you Bellingham, you haven't improved your squad. And this, this is a problem. It, 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 that was fine when you were challenging for top four. And it was, okay, we'll buy, we'll sell, and we'll buy one or two players. If you were to sell Mo Salah for 120 million, and you went and bought three or four players at 35, 40 million pound each, you could, uh, that the are young, you go, right now, we're going to build them up. And in three years' time, they will be world-class and we'll win titles. That makes sense. But to sell... Yeah one or two players to buy one individual it's it's like for like one in one out it's not it's not going to do what liverpool need because the chelsea's the man united's and the and the cities are slowly pulling away from liverpool again in terms of squad squ squ strength squ and terry I'll, I'll just go back to this the best manager we had in the premier league era is sir alex ferguson what he always had was a crew, core group of players his spine he had for many years and all he did was just add players any fringes players he took them sold them we kept on adding the players but he had this crew core group of players that would always perform for him week in week out and we had that we had that when we started on the champions league winning the premier league but for the what fsg needed to do was just add that one or two players into those group of players so when they do get old we already have then a ready made squad but now for them it's not going to happen and they're just yeah, going to... Yeah. Uh, mate, I hear you. Oh, I'm getting a bit of yeah, feedback. Yeah. Listen, uh, Monzo, thanks for coming on, mate, and having your say and all your support on the channel as ever. I really appreciate it, bro. Thank you. Uh, Paul Burke here says Jude is going to Liverpool. So, I mean, it, going to Liverpool, his name being Jude, like there is such a great marketing spin there. Beatles reference there, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we got Tad, Tad Bakes here says Jude isn't or ain't going Liverpool is what he said here. Let's do some more of your comments here. Uh, same here. Chelsea fan will be at the match on Saturday. I can't wait. Hopefully, Salnaguez will make his debut. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the point. If Salnaguez does well, I mean, that that shortens, that, that helps everybody else in the pursuit of these individuals. So, yeah, it, it, it's going to be interesting indeed. Will Jules Kunde's release clause not still stand in January? Hi, Rebecca. 100% it stands. But Chelsea and Jules Kunde are hoping to persuade Sevilla to drop their price in the sense of they agreed verbally with Chelsea around £42 million and they pulled the rug at the 11th hour and they stopped the deal from happening. Jules Kunde is going to push. Chelsea are going to push. So in January, they can put in a bid in and around that £42 million and hope that Sevilla see sense. Sevilla want the release clause, which is around £68 million. Where they've done themselves a disservice to a degree is by agreeing that verbal amount in, in the first instance. Also, I think they kind of did it to try to get a bidding war going as well. Maybe that's it. And if nobody else comes in for Jude Bellingham, then, sorry, in for um, Jules Kunde, they'll find it difficult. But where Chelsea starts may change is if suddenly Real Madrid or a Liverpool, I'm just trying names out here for, you know, for argument's sake, if they suddenly came in and were like, okay, well, we're willing to maybe not pay the 68 million, but we may be willing to pay 55, 60 million. That's when Chelsea may have to change their stance. But as it stands right now, they're the front runners. Nobody else is pushing for the move. Jules Kunde wants to join Tottenham, uh, wants to join Chelsea Football Club. There is no doubt about that whatsoever. And that's been confirmed by so many tier one journalists as well. I'm pretty comfortable with that information. Let's do a few more comments here. Klopp rejected United. He called them Disneyland. He did. Call them that. <laughs> I don't get what you're saying, though, JJ, my brother. I don't get what you're saying. I've got to love Liverpool fans getting gassed, waiting for two injuries. Then it will be all tears again. I hope, I hope, but FFG won't is what Mohammed says. I hear you on that. I, I think Terry, love how heard everything on. Have you heard anything on the Kese swap deal? Do you know what? I've seen it trending. I haven't really looked into the deal. I'm going to send a few messages out today to a few journalists just because I haven't really spoke to too many in the last week or so. I want to chase a few people up. There are a few deals out there that are being spoken about. 
I would say don't get overly excited about any deals right now because everything at this moment in time is intermediary talk. It's it's agents, it's clubs still trying to do deals early, but clubs are not stupid. Clubs will also, generally speaking, they'll, they'll, they'll have a stoke in the fire, but they'll be keeping an eye out elsewhere because what will happen between, and we all know this, and I'm just reiterating what we already, all already know, but between now and Christmas, there is going to be another player that emerges that we're all going to want. So clubs, you know, clubs need to be mindful. Right? Two years ago, this time two years ago, not one of us was talking about Harlan. Two years later, he's who everybody wants. It's who everybody wants. So I guarantee you there's going to be a player by January that is not being spoken about by the masses now that is suddenly wanted by everyone. Uh, we're going to do our final quarter of the show today. Zane is here with us saying the Liverpool fans here. What are you saying, bro? It's all cap, bro. You, we know FSG. We know what they're up to. Sustainable model. Unless we saw Salah, then fair play. So I ain't really interested in this noise and all these Liverpool fans getting gassed. Like, oh, we're going to do it. Where you been for the last five years, bro? <laughs> you know what they're up. What I would say and what I want to talk about, why can't we get Lewandowski next year? Because he wants a new challenge. Let him come over, bro. He'll do good for us. And, you know, you know his clock. That's what I'm talking about, bro. Forget this, Bellingham. We ain't, we're in the race, bro. We ain't, we ain't got that money. They ain't going to pay that money. Sustainable model ain't happening unless we saw Salah. So Salah's contract situation don't get sorted this season. Sell him. And then, then we could talk about Bellingham, Haaland, all them, man. But until then, let's keep it realistic. And let's try and go for Lewandowski. Because trust me, I said on my channel last year, why don't we go for Rana? Look what? Guess what? My man's gone to Man United, so why can't we go for Lewandowski? Quality number nine, which we, we've been missing for fucking years. Let's get my man in and let's see what happens. You get me? That's that's all I've got to say on this because do all you, this nonsense... Do you, think, gone. do you think he would sign for you? What do you mean? Of course he would. He wants a new yeah. challenge. He's, he's done it all in a Bundesliga. What's he got left to do now? That's done now. And obviously he knows Klopp, Klopp, you know. And I think, look, what do you think? Do you think Lewandowski... Would 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 help Liverpool out? I think he would. I think he'd be amazing. You saw him uh, yesterday in the England game. If you watched that, man, ain't man ain't lost it. And look at Ronaldo. And I'll tell you something now to all these Chelsea fools out there, right? You've got a, you've got a dud there, bro. I'm told you, Lukaku, Ronaldo's going to score more goals than Lukaku in the Premier League, man. Lukaku is a clumsy oaf, a flat track bully. Do you get me? Against smaller teams, my man can yeah score his goals, but. Against Matt uh, Van Dijk, he didn't do much. You watch him play his man sit on other bigger teams. So against Man United, I don't think he'll do much. He's one of those players. You've had him for enough years at Man United. You've seen him. You know what he's about. Flat track bully, a clumsy oaf. Ronaldo will score more goals than Lukaku this season. And you lot have done a, a sick deal there, bruv. Because Ronaldo's going to, you know. And let's be honest, Serie A, bruv. Is it the same standard as Premier League? I don't think so. And Ronaldo still beat him. So... Man, there's a lot of fools chat shit, man. And I'm just coming just we'll, to we'll, say my we'll piece. We'll see what happens, Zane. Listen, bro, I appreciate you calling in and having your say today. Top, top man. Thank you very much indeed. We're back at around 4.30 uh, on the terrace today. But 9 p.m. tonight, we've got another legacy debate. We've got another legacy debate. And it's going to be very, very interesting who we're going to be debating tonight, who we're going to be talking about tonight on the football terrace. We're going to be looking at the legacies of Didier Drogba, the legacy of Sergio Aguero, the legacy of Ryan Giggs, the legacy of Luis Suarez, where they fit in the tiering system. You, the audience, are going to get the chance to have your say. We're going to have a really good panel built up for that show as well. All those links are already available on the Football Terrace homepage. So go set your reminders now. We want to see you later on this evening. From tomorrow, we're really going to gear up and build up to the return of the Premier League over the weekend. But until next time, people, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And we'll see you all again very